Hi folks, this is International Master Kosti Kovitsky, and today I'll be doing a video on the tactic that we can call drawing the king out or dragging the king out. This is basically a common tactic in chess where through usually a sacrifice you try and lure the king out of its main protection being the pawns in order to open the king up to attack by your pieces. I think this is a very intuitive idea for most players to understand. And it's pretty similar to a, a decoy tactic where you're trying to lure a piece to a specific square, but specifically relating to the king usually leads to some very nice combinations. So I'll be showing you a couple of examples here. This first one is white to play and win. If you'd like to try for yourself, Go ahead and pause the video and try to find white's best continuation. Okay, hopefully you've paused the video and, and given yourself a chance to solve the puzzle. And here white wins a very important tempo with the move, f6 check. Probably a pretty easy move to guess once you've uh, heard the topic of this video or heard the theme of the puzzle. But of course this still needs to be calculated accurately. Now if black takes on f6, White's idea is that he gets to play queen to g5 check with tempo, king has to go back to g7, and after h6 check, king g8, queen f6, white has locked in this decisive uh, mating net that's very common with queen and pawn, uh, threatening queen to g7 mate. Black has one spite check on b2, but white can simply play king to b1, black's checks run out, and, and black will be forced to resign shortly as white is just giving mate. However, there was one more line to calculate. Of course, black's king was not obliged to accept the pawn, and black might also try king to h8. Here, white wins with queen to h6, rook to g8, and h takes g6. Now, if rook takes g6, we simply trade rooks and give mate on g7. And if f takes g6, white can play the simple rook h1, and black has no defense to queen takes h7 mate. Or even simpler is queen takes h7 right away, followed by rook h1 with a mate on the h file. So this was a nice way to finish the game, but not exactly necessary as if you calculated this far and saw rook h1, this was also quite good enough for white to win. White is just giving mate here. Now, this move f6 is a very strong move because it really gives white a very important tempo in the attack. Playing a move like queen g5, while also looking strong, gives black a chance to play f6, and I think black has better chances to defend the king here. So a lot of times these tactics can really uh, change the course of the game. Winning one crucial tempo, especially in a dynamic attacking position where both sides have their chances, can make all the difference in the world. Our next problem here is black to play and win. If you'd like, you can pause the video and try to solve it for yourself. And here black wins with a really nice move, bishop to h3 check. This draws the king out to h3, and after king takes h3, black comes in with queen to g1. Obviously this move was impossible with white's king still on g2, and white's king here is going to be subject to a, a mating attack. Black is threatening queen to h1, followed by queen h5 with a mate, and white has no adequate defense to this. He can try bishop f1, for example, but queen h1 check, rook h2, rook h8, and, and black is winning. King g4, queen takes h2, and he just has a winning attack on the board. So this move is easy to miss in a game because we don't always expect to have uh, such a winning combination. And most players here would likely play a move like rook h8, not realizing that they have this bishop h3 check possible. After rook h8, I think black's position is quite good, but, you know, white can play knight f2, defend h3, and I don't think black has any immediate win here. After bishop h3 check, if in case you were wondering, if white plays king h2 and does not take the bishop, well then here black can play rook h8 and ensnare white's king in this mating net. And now the threats are, are tremendous. Bishop f1, bishop c8, and, and white is just lost here. He has no defense. Our last puzzle here is, again, white to play and win. And I'd encourage you guys to take the time to pause the video, spend a couple minutes, and try to find the solution and all of the relevant variations. 
Okay, if you pause the video and solve the problem, we're going to move on with the solution now. And okay, the first move is hopefully obvious to you by this point. White plays b6 check. And now black has to make a choice, but is losing in all lines. If black's king does not take the pawn, if he goes back to the back rank, well, this pawn acts as a very strong asset in white's attack, and white gives rook h8 check, and black is just lost on the back rank. Rook takes b6, loses the queen to queen takes d7, and white is winning. And lastly, the key variation with king takes b6, you really needed to see white's next move in order for this entire tactic to work. If not, then, well, unfortunately, you have not found the full solution. So a move like rook b4 check, while pretty, actually leads nowhere for white. Black can play king to c7, and in fact, white is just lost here thanks to the pin along the e-file. So this is no good for white. Instead, white wins with the very nice trick rook to h6 really nice cross pin and now we can see why it was necessary to lure the king to the sixth rank white counter pins the rook on e6 and white is starting to just take on e6 if black plays rook takes h6 white wins the queen with queen takes e7 and this is a winning position for white now if black could get away with taking this pawn he might be okay but white has queen e6 check and the game is just over so these tactics with uh, luring the king out, a lot of times it's not really necessary to, let's say, see the entire tactic, but at the very least, your intuition should be guiding you to check these moves. Every time you have this option to, let's say, push a pawn next to your opponent's king and try to lure him out into the open, it usually opens up the potential for tactics. Now, a move like b6 is not always going to work, especially with reduced material. You might not always have enough forces to uh, find the winning tactic, but it's a move that you should be intuitively checking every time you have this option available, as a lot of tactics do pop up from time to time. With that, we'll wrap it up here. Check out the exercises for more puzzles related to this theme. And until next time, this was International Master Kosti Kavutsky.